Hi everyone. In this series of videos we're looking at how to use the Avada Builder design elements. Today we're looking at how to use the scroll progress element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. The scroll progress element was a new addition for Avada 7.3. This element allows you to add a scroll progress bar to your content to show your users just how far through a page or post they are. To get started, let's have a look at this element at work. We can see it here on the What's New in Avada 7.3 page. If I scroll down, we can see the green progress bar across the bottom of the page. This is very helpful on long pages like this. There are several ways to implement the scroll progress element. You can add it into a layout section assigned to either a global or conditional layout so you have full control over what pages or post types etc it's used on. But as it's a normal design element you can also add it to a single page if you want to. But probably the most typical way to add this element will be to add it to a layout section. So you could for example add the element into a layout section and then assign that to a conditional layout that only displays on posts. In that way it would show on blog posts which are often quite long, but not pages or anywhere else. Let's see how to add it as per our example. I'll just head to Avada Layouts, and here on the Country Butcher pre-built website we can see there's already a blog post layout. There is no header layout section here, so it's just using the global header. But as I want to have the scroll progress bar in the header, but only on single blog posts, I'll need to make one. So I'll just edit the global header, Copy the code in text view, come back to the layouts and create a new header layout section here called blog header. And now I'll paste the code in here, effectively duplicating the header layout section. I'll just update this layout section and switch over to Avada Live. OK, so now I'm ready to add my scroll progress element. The first thing I'll do is make a new 1 1 container. I'll edit it and change the interior content width to 100% width. This is because I want the scroll progress bar to go the full width of the page. I'll also go to the design tab and remove the left and right container padding. I'll now edit the column the scroll progress bar will be in and remove the bottom margin. Now I'll add the element itself. The first option is quite important. With the progress bar position you choose where to display the progress bar. If you choose fix to top or fix to bottom, the element is taken out of the content flow and displays at the very top or the very bottom of the viewport. Here it's on default, and in this case the default is content flow. So with this setting, it's like any other element and will display exactly where it's placed. I'll leave the height on default, which is 10 pixels, and I'll head to the design tab. Here I'll change the background color to black and the progress color to gold. OK, that's nearly there. We just have to make this container sticky and add some offset to take into account the sticky container above it. So I'll edit the container above this and on the General tab I'm going to add a CSS class here so we can target this container for the offset. I'll just call it sticky underscore menu. And now back in the container holding the scroll progress element I'll head to the Extras tab and set the position sticky to on. And in the sticky container offset field, I'll add the CSS selector. So in this case, I will write dot sticky underscore menu. So what this does is make the container sticky, but offsets the distance to the top by the height of the sticky menu container above it. For more info on sticky containers, please see the how to work with sticky containers doc linked below. OK, we can still see a gap here above and below our scroll progress bar as the live builder adds a bit of space to make things big enough to select. But if we save this layout section, and head to a blog post, and refresh, then we can see our black line directly below the menu container. And as we start to scroll, the progress bar starts to show, and the bar sticks at the very bottom of the menu. As we scroll right to the bottom of the page, the bar goes the full width of the page. Awesome. But remember there were two other progress bar positions? Let's go back and look at those. They are fixed to top and fixed to bottom. 
If you don't have any sticky headers or just want the scroll progress bar at the very top or bottom of the viewport, choose one of these. As mentioned before, choosing either of these takes the positioning out of the content flow entirely. So in that way, it doesn't matter where in the layout section you add it. So here, all I really need to do is change the position. I'll just choose Fix to Bottom. As you can see, the element becomes a placeholder, and the scroll progress bar is shown at the very bottom of the page. And when we scroll, it works as previously. If I change the position again to Fix to Top, the bar moves to the very top. As I start to scroll there, I can see it disappears. In this case, this is a Z index issue due to the sticky header containers. So if I edit the container holding the scroll progress element and head to the Design tab, I can scroll down here and in the Z index field, I will add a number higher than the Z index that's set on the header containers, making sure this content stays at the top. So again, let's save this and head back to the front end and refresh. Now the black bar moves to the top, and as we scroll, the progress bar fills the space and stays on top of all the content. Okay, that's awesome. This is a very useful element for showing users where they're at on long pages, and with the three positions, there's a lot of flexibility built in. Okay, this concludes our video on how to use the scroll progress element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.